I don't even know. I, I would imagine it's uh, uh, dot life. L l dot life? Life dot AP. <laughs> life. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, yeah, it's been a while since I last streamed, and today I'm going to be doing something different. Uh, I'm going to be. Oh. Oh, okay. It was it was uh, life dot JPG. Thank you. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be doing something different today. Oh my god, hello, Kindred! <laughs> oh my gosh. Hello, Kindred, thank you for showing up. Anyway, today, I'm going to be doing something different. I'm going to be playing a dating sim called Asagao Academy, uh, which is uh, the dating sim where you date the boys of Normal Boots. of Normal Boots, which is a group of YouTubers that talk about video games. In the in the group is um, John Tron. <laughs> He's the one who got me into Normal Boots. Um, there's Peanut Butter Gamer, um, Satchbag Goods, Continue, um, Pro Jared, uh, The Completionist, uh, Did You Know Gaming. Uh, am I missing anyone? My incessant flirting will come in handy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I'm being hosted by so many people. Yay. But anyway, is there anyone else? I feel like there might be someone else. Uh, let me check. There's a... Uh, let's see if I'm uh, missing anyone. PBG, John, Jared, Gerard, Continue, Satch, Shane, Hidden... Okay, that's all of them, but, but, uh, you can also, there, the, oh, you know what, never mind, I'll just get into the game. Uh, so today, we are going to be romancing Satch, because he's adorable. I would go with Jontron, but frankly, I didn't like his route, it was kind of, it, 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 was, it, was, it was, it was disappointing. Uh, so, what, what, wait, which, which one is that? Yeah. Askelacademy.exe. Uh, let's do this. I hope that worked. The characters of the Normal Boots Club and Hidden Block Club are inspired by the personas of the real Normal Boots and Hidden Block groups of YouTubers created with their permission. Despite this, the characters are in a ri oh, okay. And now we get to open it and watch the opening cinematic because, because, yeah. Is my, are my audio levels okay? Can you guys hear me over the music? I hope you can. And later, let's just watch this. Oh, shoot! I forgot to turn the...
Asagao Academy Normal Boots Club. Okay, that one's that. Oh gosh. Oh, that one's that one's my Created by um, Peanut Butter Gamer's wife Danielle and someone else. I don't know who they are, but yeah. Mm. So let's just get into it now that I've wasted all your time. Chapter one. The ch okay. Also, I'm gonna be doing voices for this game. Um, for the just the regular narration, I'll be doing my regular voice, but for the main character's actual lines, I'll be imitating her voice actor. The train made its way along the gentle curve of the coast of Japan, whisking me farther and farther away from home. Across from me sat a boy, face half buried in a newspaper. He was deeply entranced in whatever article he was reading and hadn't spoken a single word to me, even when I asked if I could join him in the last compartment with any available space. He shrugged, nodded, and adjusted his newspaper without ever making eye contact. It had been almost an hour, in fact, and he hadn't once looked at me. Devoid of conversation, I took instead to counting the buttons on the pretentiously lush carmine seat cushions. One, two, three, twenty-one, twenty-two and so forth, over and over. Oh! Oh, sorry, I'll be, I'll be checking chat out, um, you know, between lines and stuff. Oh, I'd love to stream with Emelian. Hmm. I, I, that would be so great. I could, like, be, be in a Skype call with them, and they could get, have the S desktop audio on and uh, capture my voice, you know. But yeah, I'd love to stream with Emelian and India and Tekid. That'd be great. I, I love them. Anyway, now and again, I turned to look out the window where the trees were blurring by. Sometimes the smeared green would break and reveal the quiet blue of the Sea of Japan. Eventually, this rapidity made my stomach churn, and I went back to counting the buttons on the seat cushions. One, two, three. The train compartment shuddered around us. My eyes wandered to the boy and his jacket. It wasn't the school issued blue that I and other students on the train were wearing. Instead, it was a green, varsity like jacket with an embroidered patch poorly sewn on front. Hmm. So, you're a first year then. I don't really know Probeteria's voice that well. 
He folded his newspaper neatly, set it in his lap, and looked at me with a half-interested gaze. Did he just catch me staring? Now that the paper was gone, I saw his face. He watched me through the through heavy lidded eye the heavy lid heavy lidded eye Oh, someone followed! Thank you! Through heavy lidded eyes. I'll check to see who that was um, on the screen in a moment. His hair was immaculately groomed, his teeth straight his teeth straight and blindingly bright. There was something about him, the way the light hit him, that made him look like he was almost sparkling? Um me? <laughs> He glanced around the compartment, empty besides us, and laughed. Oh, no, I I'm not a first year, I'm a third year. The train began to slow, metal wheels groaning against, the me against metal tracks. The sudden shift threatened to rob me of whatever was left in my stomach, but I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, willing myself to keep it together. What kind of, what kind of impression would I leave puking on a student before I even arrived at the academy? Also. Asagao is Japanese for morning glory, and you'll find that there's a lot of things in this game that are flower-themed. The boy frowned. I picked at the hem of my cotton skirt. That's not possible. I've never seen you before. It took me a moment of mouth-fishing mouth to find a response. Uh, I, uh, it's... It because I'm a transfer student? <laughs> he laughed again. A transfer student, huh? We don't get many of those. I removed my acceptance letter from the front pocket of my uniform. The paper, heavyweight, off-white, had accumulated creases from my reading and reading, reading and rereading, as if the words might have been cha might have changed since the last time I read th read it. The boy took it, studied it, and handed it back to me. I'll see you around. Well then, Hana. I suppose I'll be seeing you around. He smiled at me and as he picked up the suitcase lying next to him. By the time I hicked up, hiccuped a response, he was already gone from the compartment. I stared out in the, into the empty hallway of the train. It was then I realized he, having gotten, having gotten it from my acceptance letter, knew my name and I never got his. The train settled at the station and I filled out, filed out, sorry, filed out with the rest of the uniformed students. It was early April, and the last frost of winter had come and gone. The trees were already green, their leaves shivering in occasional gust in the uh, in the occasional gust weaving through them. The air was mild, only a few clouds hanging in the sky. I walked along yeah, I walked along the road with a swarm of blue jacketed bodies, looking at the little groups breaking off into, from the crowd. Everyone was buzzing so animatedly around me. I held my suitcase tight in my sweaty, my sweaty hands. It was leather-bound and worth more than anything it contained. It wasn't far to the school, and I was, for maybe the first time, first time in my life, thankful that what I owned didn't amount to much. My school issued, back, my school issued black oxfords click click clicked on the pavement. I walked this way, oh, sorry, I walked this walk over and over in my mind. So many nights I lay awake, imagining what it would be like to walk from the train station to Asagao Academy for the, this time, this first time. My new start. I always imagined that everything would change for me on this walk. That somehow, everything would be magically different. But as I looked around, I realized nothing had changed. I hadn't changed. By the time I reached the massive gate to the academy, I forgot all about the disappointment slouching in the back of my throat. The school, framed by the gate's twisted black metal, was just as beautiful as the glossy photos I saw, it, saw in its pamphlets. This was it. Asagao Academy, sorry. I glanced around. The swarm of students gathered around the gate. Beyond it, tiny blue people bounced around the academy's main building. A girl pressed a button to one side of the gate. The, the excitement in the air was almost palpable. Eh. A few moments later, the black gate, with great effort, uh, creaked outwards and cleared the pathway. 
As the rest of the group shifted into mo motion, I followed along, a sheep in the herd. My stomach tied itself into knots. The crowd split off into different directions. For a moment, I panicked. A tired-looking man with gray hair called out for first years, a cluster of fresh-faced students gathering around him. Hey, look at that girl! I turned. A few feet away, a small group of boys were pointing at me and snickering. Pink hair? Are you kidding me? How desperate can you get? Hot shame crawled down my neck. Oh, someone now followed! Thank you! I attached myself to a group of girls, following a, step, a, few, a few steps behind them. I don't know what I'd stream with Emelian. Uh, maybe some other visual novel type thing? I don't know. She mainly streams visual novels as far as I know. I haven't really seen her stream anything else. <laughs> in the distance, cicadas hummed in time to my shoes crunching against gravel. My hair. It wasn't my fault that my hair looked like this. Luckily, I found myself at the girls' dormitory, a large sign in the lawn reading Primrose House. The building dwarfed me in size and sheer intimidation. How many students did Asagal have? As I approached the building, a red-headed girl lingering nearby caught my attention. I looked away, then looked back. She was staring at me. She walked over. Oh, you must be my roommate! I'm not gonna read that. I eyed her warily. She was smiling and bouncing in a way that suggested her views on life were akin to a perpetual bouncy castle. <laughs> what? Me? Bingo. Of course you, silly! Let me guess, room 325? Two, two, I thought back to the paper I received a month prior with a list of all the supplies I needed for the year and my dorm arrangements. Uh... Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> she laughed, but I couldn't figure out what was so funny. Was she laughing at me? When I found out my roommate was a transfer student, I knew you were going to, going to be a total main character. I'm sorry, a what? Mm -hmm. When I saw you outside the gate, I knew it was you. I mean, look at that hair! I felt a lump forming in my throat. What was she talking about? She had to be making fun of me. I hadn't spent more than five minutes on this campus and I was already being mocked. My hands began to tremble. Is... is there something wrong with my hair? Her face slackened from its amused smile to a more worried, worried expression. Ah, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that irrational sloth. I love streaming. I was so happy when I got this computer because I could finally start streaming because my dad's computer was awful. Then she began to laugh again. <laughs> no, no! Oh, no, 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 oh. no, 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 no. I, it's great, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> We're getting off on the wrong foot, aren't we? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm Mai Sasaki. You must be Hana. I bowed my head. Hello. It's nice to meet you, Mai. All your school books are waiting in our room with your welcome letter, and I read the envelope. And I read the bleh, I read the envelope. I hope you're not mad. Mai started walking toward the dorm's front doors. I followed behind like a lost puppy. Did you check out? Ah, did you check in at the front desk already? No, I didn't. I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> Good. They'll offer. Eh, they'll offer to have a staff member give you a tour of the campus. But I can. Sh but I can show you around. We don't get many transfer students in our year three, you know. Why do I keep on screwing up her lines? Eh. Oh yeah, internet is always a, a pain. I get my internet for free because my dad is was doing some sort of beta test thing for his company. Uh, but yeah, it's not the best internet, but uh, but it, it, it works. It works. <gasps> oh, is that your only bag? Just the one? I'm glad I brought an extra pair of stuff to decorate our room- uh, an extra bag of stuff to decorate our room with. I started already. I hope you don't mind. But I did wait to string the lights. 
I thought we could do it together, you know? She spoke quickly, the words bubbling from her mouth, and left me no time to answer until the end of her monologue. My key. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. She held the front door open for me, and I hurried inside. Girls filed up and down the hallway, howling greetings and exchanging vague niceties that were, more often than not, How was your break? And look how tan you got! It seemed like everyone knew each other. I followed Mai as she led me through the maze of students and up two flights of stairs. Each dorm, each dorm floor looked the same as the last. Narrow, white doors lining both sides of the pale pink walls. Sounds like my kind of place. Then, thin gold numbers were tacked to the front of each, the numbers rising as we climbed. You're not missing anything with the campus tour, I promise. Mr. Saitomo does them every year, and he's, like, totally dull. He just drags you around the entire campus and talks in that weird, squeaky voice of his. I'll tell you everything you need to know. I smiled, trying to let this calm my nerves. Thank, thanks. We headed down a hallway on the third floor. Mai stopped us in front of a room dorm number 325. <laughs> Here we are! A faint smell of potpourri wafted through the room. The walls, like the hallway, were a soft powdery pink. Oh, that's my kind of room! Oh, look how pretty everything is! I just, I love it! Oh my god! I just, I'm just looking at the scenery. Uh, Obsession. Alvin Stein. <laughs> uh, that appears to be a picture of Jared on the wall. I don't know. And Tortured Souls. The only my guitar understands me. World Tour. I have no idea what that's supposed to be. Maya already defaced them with a tapestry of posters, magazine cutouts, and photographs. Some of the photos were of cats, but most were of male models and rugged musicians. That sounds like me. <laughs> a bunk bed, two writing desks with wooden chairs, a small dresser, and a mirrored vanity, all clearly provided by the school, were the only pieces of furniture in the tiny room. The top bunk was already covered in, a neat, in neatly tucked blankets and throw pillows of clashing patterns and colors. Yeah, they do kind of not match. I don't mind, though. They're pretty. The bottom bunk had a single stiff-looking pillow and a thin cotton blanket that I didn't need to touch to know it was horribly itchy. <laughs> must have I must have grimaced because my quickly smile at me. I brought way too much pillows and blankets. I always overpack. I went to Italy over break and mom got really mad at me because I brought five bags, but they were only there for a week. <laughs> She laughed, pulled several blankets and pillows from her bunk, and rearranged them on neatly onto mine. A sudden twinge of guilt and embarrassment hit me. Perfection. There! That's much better. <laughs> Thanks, Mai. I placed my suitcase on the bottom bunk and began to unpack its contents. Several changes of clothing, pens and pencils, empty notebooks, a few photographs of my father, a dilapidated stuffed rabbit, an old portable radio, and a small black box. Is it an engagement ring? Mai opened the curtains, and sunlight poured in. So, where are you from? I slid the now empty suitcase under the bottom bunk. <sighs> About two hours north of here, it's a small town called Ama Amaririse. You probably haven't heard of it. But I set the stuffed rabbit, Mr. Bunny, on my bed, a beside a purple and teal throw pillow. I wonder if Amaririsu is a type of flower. Oh, did you go to a different boarding school, or...? No, I went to a public school down the street from my house. <gasps> public school? Really? What was it like? Were, there, were the students mean? Did you have lots of friends? I always went to private schools. My parents work a lot and my dad goes overseas, so I think they stuck me here for convenience. Oh, hey, what's that? I, rem I had removed an ornately patterned origami crane from the black box and was setting it on the unclaimed writing desk. <laughs> oh, this? My mother made it for me a long time ago. 
I set it beside a stack of thick textbooks, which I assumed were provided for me. Aww. Wow, it's so pretty! I've never seen paper like that before. <gasps> oh, yeah, the lights! Let me get them. Mai went to her own desk, opened the drawer, and pulled out a long, tangled string of fairy lights. I thought these would look nice! Here, help me string them up! She grabbed a container of pushpins, then pulled her wooden desk chair out and over to one wall. I did the same with my own. Together, we pinned the lights around the perimeter of the room. How was the train ride over? Did you meet anyone? No, not really. I was in a compartment with some guy and... What? Some guy? Huh? Some guy, huh? Was he, was he cute? Uh... Oh, uh, yeah, I, I guess? I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't even get his name. Uh... Mai seemed disappointed pointed for a moment, then perked back up. You'll have to point me out to him if you see him again. Okay. Once we finished stringing the lights, Mai climbed down from her chair and brushed her hand, hand brushed her hands together triumphantly. Yeah! Done! Okay, now it's time for lunch. The food here is pretty good. There's this ramen place down the street from campus that's like out of this world, but the school only lets, only lets us leave campus on weekends. Mai walked to the window. We could go it. Uh, we could go today because it's Sunday and it's pretty nice out. But I guess you might want to go to the calf since you just got here. We could. <laughs> she. <laughs> she was suddenly interrupted by her own enthusiastic laughter. Oh my gosh, maybe Santos just totally tripped outside and fell on her face. I saw it. Oh, is it mean to laugh? Maybe I shouldn't have. Oh well. Anyways, let's go eat. I'm totally starved. She let me out of the room before I even had a chance to respond. The cafeteria was buzzing with students and ex excited for the new year. The only people as nervous looking as I felt were the tables of skittish, wide-eyed first years. I stepped into the line behind Mai, taking an empty plastic tray. We shuffled through, asking for helpings from the sulky cafeteria workers when we passed through something that looked good. With full trays, Mai led me straight to a table in the back where, we, uh, where a few students were already sitting. Mai sat down and I took a seat across from her. Hi Mai, how was your break? It was good, I went to Italy and Spain. Dad fell off a ski jet and broke his ankle. Uh-huh. It's better, it's better now, though. Oh. Well, that's nice. I expected to be introduced, but the girl turned to, back to her group of friends, and Mai turned to me. She began to assault her food with a fork and tell me, in a practically minute-by-minute -minute account, about her fleeting romance last summer with a boy she met on the beach that didn't go further than a few salty kisses. Oh, jeez. I sat back and let Mai talk. For the first time since arriving on campus, I felt like I was finally able to, to breathe. I picked up my Brussels sprouts and studied Maya as she spoke. The more she talked, the more I began to notice small details about her. She had a high songbird voice. What? She was dynamic, her face twisting this way and that into exaggerated expressions as she spoke. <laughs> she laughed often. <gasps> She imitated people in wildly unflattering voices, seemingly unrelated to her actual opinion of them. But most, but most, honestly, bleh, bleh, but most notably, she talked. A lot. I didn't find this particularly annoying, as it filled the silence, and she hardly ever questioned... She, if I, ah, she hardly ever asked questions that required my full attention. Just as Maya was rounding off a shockingly detailed account of the time she accidentally walked in on her friend's older brother in the act of changing, a familiar flash of green caught my eye. <laughs> I glanced over. <gasps> hey, that's him! Huh? Who? I leaned across the table to whisper, just in case he could hear me through the, um, the ambient chatter of the lunchroom. The boy from the train. The boy from the train. That's him. What? Jared? Um, yeah, with the weird green jacket and swoopy hair. He just picked up his tray and was walking past us when something seemed to catch his eye. Hmm? Oh, you! I looked up at him, suddenly realizing he was talking to me. Hana! Hana! I met you on the train. How are things, setting, how are things settling down for you? <laughs> really well. I found my roommate and she's been helping me out. 
I gestured to Mai, who was thunderstruck. In fact, looking around, everyone was. People stopped eating to turn and stare at Jared and me. My shoulders bunched around my neck. Well, if you ever need any help, I'll be around. Third year, right? I nodded. All right. Some of my friends are in that year. Of course, they can't compare to me, but I'll give them the heads up to look out for you. He flashed a dazzling smile, then winked. <laughs> it's the least I can do for such a cute girl. Well, I'll see you around. I watched, a torrent of thoughts raging through my head as he took a seat next to a bunch of guys who were all wearing the same jacket. <gasps> That's Jared! She tore her eyes away from him and looked at me. He's so cute! He's the most beautiful guy in school! Oh, Jared. I can't believe he just looked at me. I looked at Mai. Her cheeks were glowing in indecent pink. <laughs> Why do they all wear those jackets? Aren't all the guys supposed to wear blue blazers as a part of their uniform? No, they're al no, they're allowed to. They're you, you know, Jared. That girl turned back around and was looking at me with sudden interest. Uh, I did I know him? Did I? Yeah, I only talked to him on the train for a few minutes. So not really. We weren't friends or anything. But looking around, Mai and this girl weren't the only ones who were interested. Everyone seemed to be listening in. They seemed so surprised when he talked to me. Maybe a little white lie can hurt? <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm gonna say. I guess so. The girl looked up at me- looked at me- bleh. The girl looked me up and down, as if she was inspecting a piece of furniture for purchase. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself earlier, did I? Bleh. I saw- I, I can't do her voice. I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself earlier, did I? I'm Mimi. Nice to meet you. So, how did you meet Jared? <laughs> oh, come off it, Mimi. Jared's not interested. Mai and Mimi stared at each other for a few seconds, having some kind of silent mental, mental battle. Then Mimi turned away and continued to eat. Hmm. Sorry. It was clear that she was just trying to get in with you for her own agenda, so I cut her off. Get in with me? Why? Well, you asked me about those guys in their jackets, right? Those are the normal boots jackets. Bleh. Those are the normal boots club jackets. Um, They're what? What's normal boots club? What's normal? Bleh. What's normal boots club? Ah, it's my babs! Look how cute they are! It's a club we have at school here. It's like totally exclusive and full of only the coolest students. Oh my god. They get together and play video games or something. That one right there is John, also known as John Tron. His bird's name is Jacques. John is also the president of the drama club here at school. Next to him is PBG. He and John founded the Normal Boots Club together. PBG is one of the best soccer players on our team. Then there's Gerard. People call him the completionist because he's obsessed with completing things. He has the biggest itty bitty kitty collection I've ever seen. Next to him is Jared, also known as Pro Jared. He's a model. Then there's Satchbag, but everyone calls him Satch. He's like crazy smart. Those guys are over there are Paul, Nick, and Josh. They write a column in the new school newspaper called Continue? Paul, the one staring up, standing up, is the student council president. And that guy on the end is Shane. He knows more about video games than anyone, ever. She exhaled a dreamy sigh into her mashed potatoes. So what? Me. Same. Oh my god. I think my second screen isn't working. So, how would someone, you know, join the normal boots club? You don't choose the boots, Hannah. The, the boots choose you. Uh, dip, 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 dip. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> you have to be presented with the boots to be in the club, and they're like super selective. What are the boots? The boot the club has this boot statue. It's like, it's like the one on their patches, but it's gold plated. Is their mascot, I guess? They do this weird initiation ritual with it. 
<laughs> Ritual? <laughs> I hear they fill a room with candles and wear these totally creepy robes during initiation. This year, too, girl saw, said she saw it once, and they were all, like, chanting around the boots, and it sounded like they were talking backwards. Wait, what, what's that? Why is, why is, what, my, my phone is flashing. Why is my phone flashing? Oh, okay. I, I guess it was nothing. But I don't believe her. And it's, even if it's true, I don't care if they're a cult, because they're all really hot. <laughs> oh my god, that's me! <laughs> Do they have a lot of friends? Why is this? Oh, I guess it's. Wait, what? What is? What is going on? Why is this blinking? It's not my phone. Where's it coming from? There's something weird blinking around my house. Yeah, tons of friends. I'd say they're the most popular kids in school. I mean. Everyone in the school totally looks up to them. I bet they could get any girl in school, too. Or boy, for that matter. Oh my god. Hey, are you gonna eat your cake? I shook my head and pushed the plastic tray across the table to her. For the, remain for the remainder of lunch, I listened to my talk about Jared through mouthfuls of half-dissolved frosting. Back at the dorm, I sorted through piles of textbooks that the school left for me. My radio was playing a poppy tune, equal parts mu music to static. My fervently scribbled in a notebook on her desk, hunched over it with strikingly poor posture. Hey! It's an induction, careful of the lights! I will, irrational sloth, thank you. Hey, Mai? Mm hmm. Mm hmm, uh, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. She didn't bother to look up. Am I supposed to have a textbook for History 309? Uh... She shuffled through the papers on her desk before pr producing a thick textbook. A demure man in a powdered wig frowned at me from the cover. <laughs> yeah, th yeah, this one. I sighed. I don't have that one. The school must have missed it. Mai shrugged and left the set the textbook back in her pile. They have a bunch at the library. You can just check one out. Where's the library? Maya rifled through her notebook and wrote something down. She tore the page out and handed me a crudely drawn map. Oh, okay. Well, I'll be back in a bit. It took me at least 20 minutes to find the library. By the time I realized I was heading, fault holding the map up. <laughs> By the time I realized I was holding the map upside down, the sun was setting. The library was much larger than I expected. The walls lined from floor to ceiling with books of all sizes on rough wooden shelves. Intimidated, I headed for the front desk. A recognizably green and gray jacket was bent behind the counter. N normal boots. I briefly considered running away. Hey. Can I help you? I'm not gonna try to do his voice because that would be kind of racist. <laughs> Too late. Uh, uh, yeah. The school forgot to give me one of my textbooks. I was told I could get it here. Hmm. Which one is it? The History 309 textbook. He stepped from behind the counter and motioned for me to follow. We dodged behind the aisles in a comfortable silence. He seemed friendly enough. Should I, I should say something. What was his name again? Shane? Gerard? John? No, not not John. Satch. Satch! Uh, I didn't have to say that! Huh? Oh, um, you work here? Ugh, of course he worked here. <laughs> he chuckled, dimples appearing in his cheeks. Yeah, I'm the librarian's assistant. It's my second year, and I love it. I get to help people find books that speak to them. His eyes twinkled like a kid that's kids on Christmas. Your book's right down here. He stopped at a row of thick, dusty books. Was this all history? And pulled out the book from the powder-wigged man- bleh, The book with the powder-wigged man I saw earlier. <laughs> Thanks. He waved his hand. It was nothing. Did you need anything- Did you- Do you need help with anything else? Um, 
I wanted to make a good impression on the normal on the normal boots club, but I couldn't come up with anything. No. Thanks. Copacetic. You're welcome. As we headed back through the cavernous library, my unease melt melted away. We weren't talking, but just being near him felt like I'd being wrapped in a soft blanket. I resisted the urge to snuggle up to him. Oh, that's so cute! We neared the front desk, stepping around a clump of students studying students. As we passed, one of them shifted. Huh? Something white flew past my face. A thick piece of triangular paper lay at my feet. I bent over and picked it up. It was surprisingly heavy. There was a quarter inside of it. As if... If I was just a hair slower, it would have hit me in the face. <laughs> the student snickered, and I recognized the boys that made fun of my hair this morning among them. My heart dropped. I scanned my memory for anything I might have done to offend them, but I came up with nothing. My hands started to shake. I hid it behind my back, trying to think of some way to defend myself. Um, Why did you do that? Huh? What do you mean? We were just messing around. Are you suggesting we did it on purpose? I faltered. There was nothing I could say. I was outnumbered. They would twist my words around, no matter how straightforward I was. No, I... Sorry. One of the boys held his hands out for the paper. I inched closer to give it to him, angry at myself for being so compliant. I wish I were... A gentle warmth closed over my hand and took the paper from me. Hmm. Satch examined the paper closely. I see what the problem is. Your aim would have been better if you'd cut the corners before you folded it. He placed the paper on the table. The boy looked at him in sheer awe. Be careful, though. You almost hit her. That would have been awful. My hands began to sweat it as panic shifted through me, afraid of the response, but... Jeez, we're sorry. We'll be careful next time. Yeah, it was an accident. They apologized? Thanks, I appreciate it. He gave them a wide smile and continued off down the aisles. I followed closely behind, my legs weak. What a sweetheart. Don't tell me they just stopped because of him. Simply because I was hit with- Simply because I was with him? I wanted to thank him. My heart was pounding so hard I knew my voice my, I knew my voice would shake. We reached the front counter and he scanned the history book. My lips trembled as I willed myself to say something, anything to thank him. He tilted his head to the side. What books do you like to read? Oh, uh, fiction? He chuckled. I just finished a good book. I thought it'd be right to- uh, I thought it'd be right- I thought it'd be right up your alley, if you don't mind me saying so. He reached under the counter, pulled out a thick green book, and passed it to me. A man in black stood on the front, hugging a woman in royal robes. It's a, it's long, but it's one of my favorites. The Princess Betrothed. Ah, The Princess Bride! I love that book! I know things can be tough transferring to new school. If you're ever worried, just read this. It'll transport you hun a hundred miles away in a second. Tears stung in my eyes. Tears stung my eyes, so I ducked my head. Satch. Thank you, Satch. <laughs> For more than just the books. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't think I got your name. My name is Mason. I'm a transfer student. Music is really loud. Much louder than the- I'm gonna- I'm gonna change that. Music volume. I should probably- eh. Music at like... There. Sound effects volume can be a little bit quieter. Voice volume all the way up. Return. My name is Hana Mizuno. I'm a transfer student. Hana. Well, it's nice to meet you, Hana. Let me know if you like the book. I will. That couldn't have gone better. Not only was Satch impossibly kind, but being around him felt easy, refreshing. Like being doused in a mist of a waterfall. Oh gosh, what was I thinking? My cheeks hot, I left the library. Two surprisingly heavy books under one arm. I settled into bed, 
eager to get started with my new light my new reading material, but uh. Mai was sitting at her desk, carving a pencil idly into the pages of a notebook. Every few minutes she released a long drawn out sigh th of as the lead of her pencil whined against the paper. Ugh. Ugh. You know, I love the writing in, in, in visual novels. They always have such great writing. I love them. I lowered my book and took the bait. Is something wrong, Mai? She let out another dreary sigh. I hope Jared notices me I hope Jared notices me this year. Does Jared know you like him? Mai whirled around in feigned shock. What? I don't like Jared. Oh, I closed my book and set it aside, deciding to play along. Well... Well, have you at least tried talking to him? <laughs> no, I, I mean, I have before. Why don't you try it, why don't you try again? She bobbed her head and from side to side, considering this like it never crossed her mind before. Yeah, maybe I could do that. Satisfied, I picked my book back up. Have you ever had a- Have you ever had a boyfriend, Hana? What? Huh? Me? No, never. Really? What? Never? Hmm. Never. I bet you 10,000 yen that you could totally- That you meet a totally cute boy here and fall in love by the end of the school year. <gasps> You're crazy. I buried my face back in my book, barring Mai from any further discussion. Fall in love by the end of the year? Me? If I were a betting kind of girl, I'd take that bet. I awoke the next morning with what felt like a lizard in my throat. That's me. <laughs> Mai was already up, shuffling through with her bag with a school bag with an enigmatic grin. The first day of school. Hana! You're finally awake! Her voice sliced through the air like a knife, and I winced. She was definitely a morning person. It's time for the first day of school! Aren't you excited? I can't wait to see what's gonna happen. What do you mean? Is something special happening today? Eh, sorry. <laughs> Something strange always happens on the first day of school, especially to someone like you. She winked. What? Someone like me? Uh-huh. You know what I mean. She smiled and started messing with a pile of papers on her desk. Shaking my head, I got out of bed and pulled my uniform out of my closet. My palms sweat as I held the gold vest and blue jacket. Was it really possible for things to be different here than they were at home? What if the problem wasn't actually the school? I shook the thoughts out of my head and that changed into my uniform. Oh! Hmm? Uh, what is it? Aww. You look so cute! Really? R really? He creeped up my neck. This is why I want to, I want to, you know, a, a storyline with my. It'd be great! Yeah! Completely! Your hair matches your new, your uniform so well. You look like a flower blooming straight out of the ground. <laughs> Thank you. Water stung the back of my eyes, and I turned to start packing my backpack. Why I was letting worked why I was getting worked up about something as little as this, I must have gotten less sleep than I thought. Is something wrong? <laughs> no, nothing's wrong. I I'm just happy. How dumb was that? I started crying at the first sign of someone being nice to me. I took a deep breath to steady my nerves. <laughs> <laughs> what an oddly menacing laugh. All the air left my lungs as something like a like horse hooves slammed against my back. <gasps> uh, you'll do just fine. Don't worry, this is going to be awesome. I stiffly peered over my shoulder. That... that was you? What? Huh? Mai stood behind me, her hand raised. Somehow, she had the strength of a bodybuilder. N nothing Eh. I was just about to zip my bag up when I spotted the book Satch gave me lying on the, my nightstand. 
The princess betrothed. He said that if I ever needed to be transported somewhere far away, I could take it with me. It was a pretty good it was pretty good so far. Maybe it would be smart to bring it along, just in case I had no one to talk to between class periods. I think my um second screen might not be working. Could someone send a message so I could see if it is working? It was pretty good so far. Maybe it would be smart to bring it along, just in case I had no one to talk to between class periods. Would I need it for my first day of class? I'll take it, because that's the only way to un unlock Satch's root! I put, into, I put it into my already overfull bag, biting my lip. It never hurt to be prepared, right? You ready? Yeah! Yeah, let's go! Hehe, <laughs> stick with me, you'll be fine. Mai opened the door, and together we stepped into the hallway, merging into a steady, steady flow of chittering girls and fruit-flavored perfume. That's... Scent-free zones, guys! People can be allergic! Oh, Mai! I did, I did not know we lived on the same floor. No way, really? That's so awesome! Now we'll be able to catch up! Whatever happened between you and I... The river of girls shifted as we headed down the stairs. Suddenly, I found myself surrounded by a bunch of people I didn't know. Hmm, looks like my screen isn't working. Wait, why? Why is... Did I... Something's going on. Uh, just a second, guys. I am an going. Okay, I'm just gonna test this. I might have the wrong, um, thing. Uh, okay, no, it's on Asuka Academy. It's, mm. I hope I got the right, um, layout on my, on my stream. I'm just gonna check. So give me just a second to wait for the thing to show up on my screen. On my second screen. This is why I need two monitors. I wish I had a second monitor, guys. Ah, ah. The river of girls shifted as we headed down the stairs. Suddenly I found myself surrounded by a bunch of people I di didn't know. Yum, 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 yum. I'm sorry. Okay, good. My layout is working now. Okay, that's good. What a jerk. Oh, wow. What a jerk he turned out to be. My e Mai's exclamations faded into the buzz of voices in the air. Oh, no. What would I do if we got separated? Anxiously, I searched the crowd of girls for Mai, but I couldn't find her. Everyone was dressed in the same Asagao uniform. It was difficult to tell everyone apart, and being so short, I didn't, didn't really help the situation. Pretty sure Hana's like 5'2 or something? As we left the corner, sorry, as we turned the last corner down the stairwell, I saw a flash of red hair a little ways in front of me. Yeah. 
my? I reached between two girls and tapped her on the shoulder. Huh? <gasps> oh, um... Who are you? The girl's eyes flashed, almost like a jolt of electricity shot through them. Uh, uh I'm sorry, I thought you were someone else. She said something and- she said nothing and turned away, before I knew it. I stood outside of the Primrose House, watching the flow of girls disperse across its campus. Mai was nowhere to be seen. I couldn't even hear her chirpy voice. Oh man. I took a deep breath, biting my lip. This wasn't a big deal, I could go to class alone. But I didn't even know where the building was. I reached into my backpack and dragged out my class schedule. Homeroom. 206 Poppy Hall? Which one was Poppy Hall again? Weren't the classrooms on the other side of campus? I picked a direction and began to walk, trying to ignore my rising panic at the thought of arriving late to, my, to the first day of class. Wait, no, there it is again! My thing is still screwing up! My, my, why is my screen being weird? It's still here. Like, did I hotkey something weirdly? No, it uh, should be still good. Uh, what's going on? It's dumb. Okay, uh, let me try something. thing is weird. Uh, it just keeps on going to a different layout. Which is weird. Ah. Yeah, I was really happy when I got permission to to, to use that gif uh, for my intermission. I, I, I love papyrus very much. Anyway, as a third year where no one knew me, all, this, all of the people staring. Hey. Hey, you okay? You look a little lost. Someone called out to me, and I turned around, almost jumping for joy. And when I froze. A normal boots jacket. He was part of the normal boots club. I could practically feel my tongue swelling in my mouth. If this was a normal boots club member, I had to make a good impression. He was one of the founders, right? Then he must be JonTron. Um, um, yeah, I I'm new. I don't know where Poppy Hill is. You're a freshman? No problem. My class is in Poppy Hall. I'll walk you there. Really? Really? That would be wonderful. Thank you. Was this really happening? He began walking towards a black, large brick building in an enthusiastic manner, pumping his arms up and down like he was in some kind of show tune. I fell into step behind him. I didn't notice it when Mai pointed him out to me yesterday. But John Tron had big brown eyes and a warm-looking face. Oh, does he ever. He was basically a human puppy. <laughs> yep. I glanced up at him out of the corner of my eye. <coughs> ah! A bird! A, a bird on his shoulder! Birds always made me uncomfortable. Something about the ease with which they could poke out someone's eyes. Hmm. Is something wrong? Why'd you stop? Uh, no, no... Nothing's wrong. Um, he followed my gaze to the bird on his shoulder. Hey. Oh, this is Jacques. Isn't he cute? Nice to meet. Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm awful at the at the, the, the Jacques the Jacques voice. Uh, it it spoke. <laughs> yeah. He put his hand onto his shoulder. Jacques jumped into his palm. 
Jacques is a robot bird, see? Hello. Hello. Jacques's eyes gleamed with a dangerous red as he, when he spoke, but nothing else suggested he wasn't a, a normal bird. Uh, I'm glad I'm not doing John's route because I suck at his voice! And Jacques's voice! Because... Mm, we're from, mm, he's like from New York or something, and I'm, 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 I'm just a Canadian. In fact, if I hadn't known better, I would have said the red in his eyes was painted on. That's amazing. Jacques twitched his head to the side, examining me in return. The more he looked at me, the less afraid I was. What are you looking at? What? What? Nothing? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, Jacques can be a little sassy. Who are you calling sassy? I'm not the sassy one. I don't forget to feed you. Mm. Shock that was one time! I was, al I was alone and starving in the frozen tundra of this empty world. Loveless. Afraid. Mm. Ignore him. I've been bringing him with, with me to the drama club, and he's ta taking a little too well to it. I see how this is. Shut me out, like, shut me out like I have nothing to add to the conversation. Jacques retook his place on Jean, on John's I almost called him Jean on John's shoulder, this time facing away from us as he as if miffed. We resumed our walk towards Poppy Hill. I'm John Tron, by the way. Call me John. Hana. Nice to meet you. Hana. That's a cute name. Uh, well uh, thank you. So how long have you had Jacques? Since middle school. We've been together for four years now, ain't that right? I'm not listening. Yeah, well. I love him to death. I don't know what I'd do without him. It seemed like life would be a lot easier without him, but who was I to say? We arrived at a brick building. A white sign surrounded by poppies declared it to be, unsurprisingly, Poppy Hall. Which room are you in? Room 20 uh, Room 206. Really? Seriously? Yes. That's my homeroom! We're in the same class! <laughs> John laughed and clasped, clasped me on the shoulder. Wonderful! I guess I'll be seeing you more of you then, right? Yeah! Right! Together, we entered Poppy Hall. Poppy Hall was lined with fluorescent lights and Asagao blue lockers. The lack of students milling around in the hallway indicated we were a bit late. We ran up the stairs and made it to the classroom just as the bell rang. Oh my god. Why is my throat already killing me? Uh My heart caught in my throat. Thankfully, the teacher hadn't come yet. Instead, students clumped into typed pods and milled around the classroom, catching up on vacation news. John. Thanks so much for showing me to class, John. See you later. No problem. I'll see you around. He waved and disappeared into the wriggling mes mass of students. I glanced around the room, looking for an empty seat. Anna. <laughs> Mai peeled herself out from between the cuddling a cuddling couple. Was that Jontron? Were you just talking to Jontron? Yeah. Mai's eyes widened, and I couldn't help but feel a little, feeling a little smug. Hmm. I realized I didn't know the way to class after you and I got separated, and he offered to walk me. <laughs> Mai Mai emitted a high pitched squeal. High pressurized squeal. Okay. Jontron walked you to class? Oh my gosh, you have to tell me everything. She grabbed me by the wrist and pulled me into an empty desk at the back corner of the room, right next to the window. It's the main character desk. I saved you a seat. I slid in and took off my backpack, holding it to on the side, hooking it on the side of my desk. I can't read. I was a little bit worried the books inside were too heavy for the bag to handle, but so far it held up well. Um. Sorry we got separated, by the way. I can get a little chaotic some- It can get a little chaotic sometimes. I can't believe I, I can't read. Oh, uh, just a second, guys.
Okay, I'm back. I might have to cut the stream short. <laughs> I have some chores to do before my parents get home, and, you know. <laughs> but, I guess, um, let's, uh, let's keep going until we get to, like, chapter two, and then I'll have to stop the stream, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, I don't wanna, but, you know, whatever. So tell me, what happened? What did he say? What did he smell like? Does he have peach fuzz? Is it rough? Oh, what? 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 What happened? Uh... Wait, what? Stupid. <sighs> These are very important questions I am asking. You need to answer them. Was his hair super silky, or did it have the roughest of a dog's coat? Before I could answer, uh... Before I could answer, the door to the front of the room slid open, and a tall woman strolled in. The class went quiet and obediently slid into their seats. My heart beat furiously, blood rushing through my ears. Class? Good morning, class. The teacher's melodious voice swarm swam through the room calming the buzzing high of students back from break. My shoulders relaxed and my fear ebbed away. I'm your cheese... Just end me. I am your teacher, Shizuka Wakahisha. Wa she Shizuka Wakahisha. Hisa. I can't... I can't read. I can't read. Shizuka Wakahisa. Shizuka Wakahisa. You may call me Mist Miss Shizuka. The emphasis she placed on the word led me to believe led me to believe calling her Mrs. wasn't a mistake she would take lightly. Some of you might have noticed that we have a new student this semester. H a hail of murmurs passed through the class. Some people glanced at me. Nope. There was the fear again. Mm -hmm. Would you like to come up and introduce yourself? I nodded, stood, and walked to the front of the room. So slowly walked to the front of the room, counting my steps to make sure I wouldn't fall. I faced the class, took a deep breath to introduce myself, and noticed a familiar face in the crowd. There was John, sitting with two other boys wearing normal, normal boots jackets. One of the boys, the tallest one, was staring at me, the barest of frowns on his face. Something about him seemed really familiar. Wait, he was PBG, wasn't he? The other founder of the Normal Boots Club. Suddenly, all the strength left my knees. What should I do? Why was he frowning? Was it possible that I already made a bad impression on him? You have to be kidding me. If he didn't like me, what did that mean about everyone else? Wouldn't they follow his lead? I swallowed. The faces of the class began to congeal, forming into one giant blob. You moved from out Amaris Amar Amar You know what, I, I give up. I give up. I nodded I nodded and swallowed again. Then, like a beacon of light, I noticed Mai smiling and giving me a thumbs up. That's right. What would Mai do in this situation? Yes, I've just moved here. My name is Hana Mizuno. I transferred from Amaririsu Public High School. Amaririsu. I'm really excited to be here. I hope you'll all take good care of me from now on. I bowed my head and they ha clapped happily. They clapped politely. When I looked up, PBG wasn't frowning, but he still seemed oddly confused. Maybe he always looked like that. <laughs> Thank you. You may be seated. I returned to my seat, heaving a small sigh. The hardest part of the day was over. Shizuka began to talk about standard procedure for the, for the semester. The rules for class, when homework was due, and that sort of thing. It was all very similar to my old school, and I spaced out in spite of myself. 
A brief flicker, flicker of movement caught my eye. PBG again. I glanced at him, and his head snapped back from to the blackboard. What was his problem? Class continued on like this and... Class continued on like that until finally the bell rang and it was time for lunch. Mm. Uh. Mai stretched her arms over her head and yawned. Man, I hate the first day of class. It's always so boring. Weren't you looking forward to it this morning? Something about exciting things happening? <laughs> well, yeah, but it already did. You met JonTron, didn't you? Now I've got nothing, nothing left to look forward to. Uh. She sighed. And I was hoping to see Jared before class, too. She slouched and fell across the seat of my desk. Front of my desk. Front of my desk. It says front of my desk. It seems like this would be happening a lot. Is Jared really that hot? Mai's head snapped back up, her eyes flashing. <gasps> What did you say? I, uh... If you stare directly at him for too long, your nose will melt off. I've seen it happen. What? What? Anyways, let's head for lunch. I'm super hungry. Oh. I looked at my backpack. It held up well throughout the class, but I worried that if I didn't take some of my stuff, stuff out now, I might do some permanent damage to it. Especially with Sasha's book in there. I couldn't exactly afford a new backpack. I need to put something in my locker first. Oh, no. But if we don't go now, they'll run out of they'll run out of sesame seed buns. Uh. Oh, that's okay. I'll just go on ahead. Come find me, okay? All right. I was so lucky to have someone like her as my roommate. Quick as I could, I went to my locker and shoved the book inside. As a good as a good a book as it was, I was infinitely happier that I had Mai around so I didn't have to read it. Without her, who knew what I would do with myself, especially with PBG staring at me like that? Maybe I could ask her what was up with him when I first when I met her at the cafeteria. It might just be the way he was. Cheered, I headed for the cafeteria. I carried my melon bag, melon bread, it says melon bread, I can't read, I carried my melon bread throughout, I carried my melon bread through the minefield of people, searching for the now familiar sight of Mai's red hair, where is she, I couldn't see her anywhere, and there was, there were almost no empty seats, all around me, students circled each other, laughing and joking, sharing bites of food and splitting the cost for sodas. Suddenly, I, I felt very obvious and very alone. Isn't there anywhere I can sit? Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sloth. I'm glad to know that. Uh, Amaririsu is the name of a flower, and it means shy. And I, and Hana actually is the, is Japanese word for flower, so, yeah. Just then, I spotted a table at the front of the room. A lone boy s sat at it, stabbing his spaghetti with the vigor of a Roman general. He was having a hard time with it. I moved closer to him, working up the courage to ask to sit with him. Well, no wonder. He was eating his spaghetti with a spoon. Wait a second. This guy was in my class, wasn't he? I saw him that morning at the front of the room. And he was wearing a jacket just like the normal boots club, but different. A golden gray jacket with an 8-bit block on the front. Was he a member of another club? Or maybe he was friends with them? Hey! Hey, what? Anna! Oh, my! My appeared between me and the boy, who glanced up at us before returning to his spaghetti. Mom's spaghetti. Thank goodness I found you. I saved a table for you in the back. Oh. I looked at the boy and then back at Mai. Come on. She grabbed my shoulder rather forcefully and pushed me to the back of the room. 
Hey, what's wrong? Whoa. You are so lucky I got here when I did. That kid is brutal, Moose. His real name's Ian. He's from the Hidden Block Club. The Hidden Block Club? <laughs> yeah, the rival club of Normal Boots. He's really weird. I mean... She looked around her to make sure no one was listening in, but we were completely alone in our little corner of the cafeteria. He speaks in Comic Sans. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, it'd be better to stay away from him, especially since you've already gotten to know some of the normal Boots guys. What are you talking- what are you talking about? I only just met John today. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, right. I saw the way PBG was staring at you. He totally likes you. Really? Really? Is that what you thought it was? <laughs> Either Mai was blind, or she had a serious case of wishful thinking. Oh, totally! It was so cute! Just like my favorite manga. You meet in high school, fall in love, and then go off to it and fight aliens together. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. Have some faith in yourself! That's totally what's happening! Um. So, now that you're good, good, you're in good with PBG, can you introduce me to Jared? Oh, is that what she was getting at? A hot flash of doubt seized me. Was it possible that Mai only liked me because she thought I knew the normal boots guys? That couldn't be the case, though. She was so nice. Still, looking at her shining and eager face, I couldn't talk myself out of the idea. Uh, I actually thought PBG didn't like me. What? Uh, yeah, Ian actually does speak in Comic Sans in, in the game. It's, it's kind of amazing. What? Why would you think that? Well, he was glaring at me. Man, you don't just understand. It's a love tri triangle. A love triangle. Wait, a triangle now? I can see it. Stars practically erupted from her eyes. PBG, I can't. But Hana, I... I love you. Oh, but... But my maidenhood... Where are you going with this? I slammed my fork onto the table. Mai looked pleased with herself. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm kidding. You're really cute when you blush. You almost match your hair. Th that's not fair at all. I beg to differ. Um, still. I searched my mind, eager to change the subject. That was an impressive scenario. What? 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 No, no it wasn't. I just made it up on the spot. Maya laughed nervously. <laughs> you know what? No, Mai is the me of this game. I am Mai. She is my spirit animal. Oh, so that girl who was talking to me when we got separated? Mai told the story of her past friendship with this girl when they were when they were eternal arch nemeses. Like they were eternal Apparently, they had some bad blood. I nodded, choosing to take time to relax. Before I knew it, we were finished eating. We got up and tossed our trays together. As I headed towards the door, though, Mai hesitated. Um... Hey, I forgot something back at the dorm. Oh, need help? No, no, I'm totally okay. I'm just gonna go get it. I'll see you later, though, right? See you later. Okay, see you in class. I waved, and Mai sprinted off in the direction of the dorms. Alone again, I crossed my arms and headed back to Poppy Hall. Large groups of seven or eight people were laying out in the sun, uh, playing catch and eating lunch on the lawn. It looked like they were having so. M it looked like fun having so many friends like that. I smiled. Maybe this new school would be, would really would be better than my last. Without students inside of it, Poppy Hall looked a bit like an abandoned hospital. My footsteps echoed as I climbed the stairs to the fourth floor. <sighs> With a sigh, I opened up my locker and pulled out a book that Satch gave me. Pulled out the book that Satch gave me. It was a good thing I brought it after all. I stepped into the classroom and saw a flash of movement by the window. A boy sat on the windowsill, and he jerked up when I came in. He was silhouetted, silhouetted by the afternoon sun, so I couldn't quite tell who he was. Um. 
Um, hello. Uh, did I... I'm sorry. Did I bother you? The boy stood and shook his head, then crossed up to a desk on the opposite side of the room. As he passed, I was able to see him clearly. A nor another normal boots jacket? This guy. He was Shane from Normal Boots Club. How on earth did he keep... Ha how on earth did this keep happening to me? Shane sat down at his desk, fidgeted with his hands a little, and then tur turned to look at me. You're the new girl? I nodded. My name is Hannah. It's nice to meet you. He nodded. Apparently Shane is British, but my British accent is terrible, so I'm not going to do it. Hmm. Shane. Silence filled the space between us. Panic built up inside me. This was my chance to get in with the normal boots club, and I was blowing it. I walked to my desk and sh sat down, setting the book on top of it. You, um... Shane looked at me, unsmiling. You're part of the Normal Boots Club, right? Yes, I am. Why? He spoke as if it were a challenge, almost glaring at me. Uh... Oh, I... I just saw your jacket, so... I trailed off. The jackets are really cool. Okay. Yeah, they are. Silence again. He seemed skeptical, as if he expected me to crawl out of my skin and reveal myself to be a large amphibious reptile. <laughs> I had to do something. Who knew when another chance like this would come? But Shane didn't see, seem friendly. In fact, he seemed downright suspicious. Surely he wasn't on to me already. Maybe it was better not to risk it? Eh, I'll try to... You know what? No, my voice is tired. I'm just gonna give him a space. Whatever. I chewed my lip and opened my, up my book, finding the page I ended on the night before. Shane's stare still stung, hot on the side of my face. He wasn't looking away. I stared at the page of my book, rereading the same sentence without grasping any of what it said. Finally, a small group of girls entered the classroom and Shane looked away. The atmosphere was broken. I heaved a sigh of relief. What was up with these normal boots guys? John was really nice when I spoke to him, but PBG and Shane, se Shane seemed to hate me. They, they were anything but normal. I waited for Maya to come to class, wanting desperately to tell her what happened. But when the bell rang and Miss Shizuka started teaching, Maya hadn't come. Maya still hadn't come. Class came and went, the bell rang, and I was alone. PBG stared at me for the, for the entirety of the class period, his face growing more and more menacing by the minute. How his face wasn't stuck in a permafrown, I would never know. No, never know. Shane and John didn't bother talking to me as they left the classroom, and the other students paired up around me. Hey, hey Nini, would you like to engage in a casual discourse this evening? Yeah, of course. But why are you talking like that? I stuffed my book in a back into my backpack and headed to the dorm. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> it seems like the normal boots could have a turning problem. Yeah, they're not normal boots club. They're they're not normal, not at all. You'll see just by watching their YouTube videos. With a sigh, I unlocked my door to the door to my dorm room. As soon as the door opened, I heard Hannah! What? Wh what? Mai and I lay in a heap on the floor. I'm so glad you're back. She wrapped her arms around my head and nuzzled me. That's uh... me. What are you doing? Come, look, look! She got off me and heaped, helped me to my feet. Without my smiling, bah, without Mai's face filling my vision, I saw that something had changed. <gasps> uh, oh my goodness! The dorm room looked nothing like what it had before. The posters and fairy lights were still up, but now the window had light pink curtains on it that cast a warm haze around the room. A brand new white car carpet was on the floor. Pillows were piled high in a mountain and on the top bunk of the bunk bed. 
Even our chairs had been replaced with new, cushy leather ones. What happened here? <laughs> Sorry I didn't tell you, but I wanted to surprise you. I thought this would come in yesterday, but I was but it was delayed by the di by a day. I wanted to set up I wanted to I wanted to set it up to be a big surprise. I'm still not done yet though. She gestured to some small potted plants arranged in neat rows on her desk. Want to help? Yeah. Do I ever? Do I ever? We finished setting up the room. Setting the room up, blah, blah, blah. I can't read! Oh. Oh, okay. Um, Rational Sloth. This game is uh, Asagao Academy, Normal Boots Club. And it's a game where you date the boys of Normal Boots, which include JonTron, PBG, Did You Know Gaming, Conti the boys of Continue, uh, Pro Jared, The Completionist, and... Uh, someone else. Who, who's the other person? Okay, let, let's list them all. Oh yeah, Satchbag! I'm stupid! I forgot Satchbag, the one I'm going for! Oh my god! We finished setting up the room, f switching a few objects here and there in order to be- to better facilitate the feng shui, which Mai told me was excruciatingly important. She especially wanted me to make sure our room was filled with reds and pinks and coupled items, though for what purpose I wasn't sure. It's for romance, probably. I don't know. We collapsed with heavy sighs on the floor, then heaved great yawns. It's not even the end of the day yet, and I'm so tired. Me too. <gasps> Wait! She shot up suddenly with a jolt. We should get some ice cream! Really? Ice cream? Really? Yeah! Yeah! Something to celebrate being roommates! The ice cream here on campus is genuinely good, I promise! I don't know. And I'm paying. <laughs> well, if that's the case, you made an offer. I can't refuse. Sweet, let's go. Uh, and with that, I'm gonna save here. I'm gonna save here, and I'm gonna go now, because I have to do stuff. I have to, you know, do chores before my mom and dad get home. And also my throat is really sore. So, uh, I don't want to stop, but I have to. I'm sorry. But yeah. Thank you very much for coming to my stream. Thank you for all the hosts. Uh, do I have a YouTube channel? I, I do have a YouTube channel, but and I post like highlights and stuff to that channel. But I don't use it for streaming. I just use Twitch. But anyway, thank you very much for coming to the stream uh, next time, which may or may not be tomorrow. I will continue trying to seduce Satch because he's cute. And I, I'll probably still only get an hour, another hour and a half in because, wow, I, I don't know why, but my voice is very sore. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next stream. Uh, Markiplier. Bye bye! But I can't use that one. I should have like a... Uh.